everyone, Selena here, founder, host, lead educator with the American Crochet Association. I've updated what a pattern looks like so that you guys can view it for free at the American Crochet Association. I just wanted to walk you guys through all the updates that this oldie but goodie has gotten. So if you are watching, come on over, say hey, say hello, tell me where you're viewing from. If you guys have any questions about this basket weave, crochet tote, about the basket weave stitch, about where this pattern is, about why I'm having this video, anything. Just let me know in the comments. <laughs> and as soon as I see it, I'll get right back to you. Even if you guys are watching on the replay, I promise. All right. So the Basket Reeve Crochet Tote, such a long name. I had to say it slow. Um, I wrote this pattern a few years ago because the basket weave stitch was something that I really wanted to do more of. I wanted to incorporate it. I wanted to incorporate it more into uh, patterns. Now the basket weave crochet stitch is something that we have a video tutorial for, an excellent video tutorial for at the American Crochet Association. And when you click on the link in the video description, I just have one link there. It's gonna take you directly to this page and it's gonna give you all the resources that I'm talking about today. So because the ACA already had a video tutorial for this stitch, and we also made a pattern for you to try this with a washcloth or a cup cozy, um, we did that just because um, it's one thing to learn a stitch and then you wanna do different things with stitches. You want to transform those stitches into things. So working a stitch in rows is gonna be great if you wanna recreate to make something like, I don't know, a washcloth, a blanket, something like that. And then learning how to work the stitch in tubes is just going to help you to work a stitch in joined rounds, which can be different sometimes than working a stitch in rows. And this stitch is kind of like that. So we already had those two patterns and I wanted to make a third option, uh, something that wasn't a washcloth, wasn't a cup cozy, uh, something that was gonna be super functional. I love tote bags. I especially love tiny tote bags. And so I made this basket weave crochet tote. So whenever you click on the link in the video description, it's gonna take you to this page. Can we see everything? Yeah, we can see everything. There we go, we can see everything. Sometimes technology is funny. So it's gonna take you to this page. I give you a short intro. You guys can share this on your socials. You guys can add it to Pinterest. Definitely add it to Pinterest. Um, you can email it to yourself or a friend um, and it'll take them to this link as well. So one of the things that I'm updating with all of the patterns that I've written and I'm sharing with the American Crochet Association, one of the things that I'm changing is I've got a table of contents because I don't just wanna dump a bunch of crochet patterns your way. I want those crochet patterns to be meaningful in some way. And I really want you guys to uh, learn different tips and tricks to not only work up the crochet patterns that I'm sharing, but things that you can take away for other projects in your crochet life. So some of the some of the topics in this particular post, in addition to the free pattern with free video tutorial, um, is I talk a little bit about what the basket weave crochet stitch is. So if you're just like, I don't know, it looks complicated. What kind of voodoo magic is this? I break it down a little bit just so you can have a better understanding for what it means to work a specialty stitch. Uh, like the basket weave. I talk about the basket weave crochet fabric, what it's great for. Um, and then I talk about resizing something like the basket weave stitch, because again, I know that you guys want to learn stitches. Uh, you, you do want to make a small swatch just to kind of try out different stitches, right? But then you want to turn those into, man, my phone is blowing up. Everybody's texting me today. Sorry. Um, but then you want to be able to resize that stitch in meaningful ways. So, so many people say things like, what can I crochet with the basket weave stitch? I get this question all the time. How many chains to make a blanket? So I'm just outlining it right here. And that way you have additional information. So that way it depends on what yarn you're using and it depends on what size blanket. And that way you can transform something like the basket weave stitch into a blanket using any yarn you want and you can crochet it in any size. If you guys want to see the finished or other finished projects um, of the basket weave stitch tote. We're gonna take a peek at those together. I've got dozens of images for you guys to check out. And if you guys love learning crochet stitches like this, like the basket weave, we have dozens of other stitches. So I've referenced a few of just of my favorites. Uh, and then I break down, and again, we're just looking at the table of contents here. So that's why 
Um, and this is what I've put so much time into creating. So that's why I'm just kind of going through this. Uh, then it gets down to the nitty gritty, how to crochet the basket weave stitch tote. Every single one of these are hyperlinks. So whenever you click on it, it'll take you exactly to that section. And I don't know if you guys noticed this, but I don't have any ads on my site. So yeah, hope you guys enjoy that because sometimes ads can be amazing because it can make sure that everything can be free for everybody to view, but sometimes ads kind of get in the way. So anyway, just, wanna, just wanted to throw that out there. There's no ads on my site. Uh, so if you guys do want to just jump to something like exactly what you need to make this pattern, like the yarn, the tools, if you want the finished size, the dimensions, the stitch gauge, if you want to see any of the specialty stitches and techniques in action, I've got video tutorials for you guys to do that too. Okay, before I move on to anything else, it looks like quite a few of you are here. So I just wanted to say hey to a few of you, like Angela, so nice to see you. Thanks for checking in. Stacy Till is checking in from Iowa. So good to see you. And Adriana says, it looks easy to adjust the tote size. Yes. Um, and that's another thing I wanted to show you guys in just a minute. Um, I have designed this particular tote. And so that way you can use any yarn you want. So if you want to use like a super bulky blanket yarn to make like a giant basket and you want to adjust the size of that, you can totally and easily do that. And I have all the resources to show you how. And I'll show you how in just a minute. And I'll show you what I did in just a second. Okay, so how to crochet the basket weave tote stitch. That's everything that you need to know and learn and have and do. And then I get to the instructions. Um, and I've formatted the instructions on our website a slightly different way. And I just wanted to show you guys an additional change that I made. I do this every time I show you guys a pattern. I'm like, I changed this. What do you guys think? Really, I just want these things to be very easy to view. So if you just want to get to the instructions, you click on basket weave stitch crochet toad instructions. Bam. It's like magic. It just takes you right there. Um, and I've, even though this tote is worked from the bottom all the way up to the handles in one piece, there's no cutting, there's, there's no fastening off or you fasten off once when you're done, but there's no complicated, uh, fastening off for this. Um, <coughs> excuse me, excuse me, guys. You get sneezes on the live, sorry. Um, so even though this is worked in one piece, I've put it into sections just because every now and then I get someone who goes, I'm making this tote bag and I don't understand where the handles are. So even though the handles, even though when you're following the instructions, it's like row one, do this, row one, round one, do this, round two. So you're progressively following along. Some people feel like they're missing something just because it isn't clearly outlined. So that's, that's a new change that I've made here. So we've got the single crochet tote base because the base of this tote is worked in single crochet. Fun, fun fact about how I work single crochet in joined rounds. I start with a stitch count of six and then I want to work flat even circles or flat even rounds. So every round after that um, is increased by six stitches. And six stitches is the stitch repeat for the basket weave stitch. So I have given you guys a resource for this because someone was just saying, hey, this tote looks easy to adjust. Yes. So you can add as as many. I mean, you need a few multiples, you know, to, to make a basket. So you need more than 12, right, to make a basket. <laughs> Um, so when you follow these instructions, um, exactly, there are eight increasing rounds that takes you up to 48 single crochet, but I have linked an additional resource that talks about how you can add rounds of single crochet. So if you want a hundred rounds of single crochet, you can totally do that. And it talks you through the math so that you can, and it talks you through the stitch repeat and the math. And that way, if you want to alter that, you can. Um, and the great thing about resizing something in this in the single crochet base or with a single crochet base, again, because every round is increases by six and the stitch count to recreate the basket weave stitch is six. So you're always going to have a stitch count multiple that's going to work for that basket weave stitch. So you can add more rounds if you want to make a basket. I'll show you my basket in just a little bit. Okay, again, there's no reattaching, there's no cutting off, then it takes you into the basket weave stitch crochet section. So this is just, even though the rounds are counting, you know, from the first to the last, you can clearly see that, okay, this is the first round of the basket weave stitch worked. And, and then you can kind of move through there. So it's just gonna help you with your stitch counting as well. 
Uh, what I'm also doing whenever you're reading patterns on our site as I'm updating them is even though I do have the row or round count and it is in bold, I'm um, notating those with bullets. So here we can see, for example, just the basket weave stitch crochet section. We can see all these different rounds, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, but they are clearly um, bulleted. So we can see here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's just kind of like a, a great identifier, a great marker as you're reading and following instructions on our site. So again, that's kind of new. So let me know what you guys think and if you have any suggestions or updates to make this experience even better. All right, it looks like quite a few more of you guys are here. So I just wanted to give some shout outs to some people like Don Tennyson. So good to see you. Thanks for checking in. Angelica, I know you. Thanks for checking in. Diana is here. Hello, Diana from Dallas, Georgia. Stacy, I'm so glad you're enjoying this so far. Thank you so much. Linda Woodthorpe is here, a crochet legend, one of my crochet favorites. Hello, Linda. Linda, I was just looking at your project for this particular pattern. Um, Linda, for, for anyone who doesn't know, Linda has been part of the American Crochet Association since we started, I think. Linda has been a pattern tester for so many of our projects and Linda always does really creative things. And we're gonna see Linda's project in just a second. Like whenever I say things like, you guys can experiment with different yarn weights and different, you know, different colors and things like that. Whenever I say things like that, Linda's like, okay, let me try that. So sometimes Linda will take things like this basket weave crochet tote and make like and use thread and turn it into like a lip gloss holder. Or Linda actually made this project with thread and she was like, oh, we can resize this to make a basket. She used thread and made a little coin, you know, holder. So we're going to look at Linda's projects in just a minute. But I love that Linda really shows you what creativity can look like when you follow the instructions or make a small alteration to the instructions and completely trans transform what the project is. So, hey, Linda, good to see you. Thanks for checking in. Looks like Dana is here. Hello, Dana's Wonder Lost Crochet. Always so good to see you. Hello, Paula. Thanks for checking in. Ashley Johnson is here. Hello to you, Vonda. And hello, Kim from the UK. Thanks for checking in. So good to see you. Okay, so that's everything that I've added into this. Again, tons of resources to help you through, you know, what makes this pattern different and new and exciting and a skill builder. It walks you through what a basket weave stitch is, how you can recreate that stitch repeat to transform it into something else like a blanket if you want. Now, again, I did make this a basket. I know that it's a basket weave tote. Um, and here we can see that it's very much a tote shape. So you may be wondering like, what does it mean to turn this into a basket? Um, so I did add my project right here that you guys can see. And I've also created this as a project um, and attached it to Ravelry. So as you're looking at the Ravelry projects, you'll see mine. And all I did here again, is I just increased the base, that single crochet base more. So I didn't stop with the pattern when the pattern only goes up to so many rounds. I just added more rounds. And again, because it's with single crochet and each round increases by six, it didn't matter how many rounds I had because I could follow the um, basket weave stitch repeat and it's going to get, you know, I don't have to make any other accommodations revisions. And then from there, I just topped it off with a few rounds of single crochet and then probably slip stitch because that's how I finish things like this. And voila. A basket. There you go. Okay. So again, you guys can find this on Ravelry. If you just want to purchase a PDF version of this that you can save, print, download for later, um, to where it's just the pattern instructions and nothing more. And what I love about utilizing Ravelry is that you can see all the finished projects that have been posted so far. So if you want to see this project worked up in a variegated yarn with a short repeat and a completely different color and a completely different yarn, if you want to see other baskets, baskets with handles, baskets without handles, here's Linda Woodthorpe's um, here. Well, here, can you see it right there? It's kind of highlighted a little bit. You can see Linda Woodthorpe's um, thread basket. And here you can see just little tiny little rocks here. You can see it for scale. You know, here's her crochet hook and you see this tiny little basket. So you really can make it as small or as large if you want. Again, if you want to use jumbo yarn, that's like blanket yarn, you want to make a huge basket or a huge throw pillow. Hmm. Now that's an idea. If anybody makes a huge floor poof with this, I would super love to 
oh my gosh, now that needs to happen. I want to see that. <laughs> now I'm excited. But seriously, baskets, totes, things like that. And one of the main reasons I love this as a drink tote, a wine tote, is that the basket weave stitch creates such thick fabric. It's almost like a double layer of fabric in some places. So it's, you know, sometimes with some crochet stitches, it's a little thin. So um, it's not as insulating, I should say. It's not as... Goose agrees. It's not as insulating as something like a basket weave stitch. It's just so thick and it's so dense that typically fabric like this, when you use a cotton yarn, it's not going to have a lot of give. It is going to be a really thick fabric. So you can feel pretty confident about crocheting um, this wine tote in this particular stitch, especially if you use something like a cotton yarn. And it's not only going to hold the weight of a wine bottle, but if that wine bottle clinks against anything else, it's really going to be protected and insulated. So lots of cute little projects here. We see lots of staged pictures, just so good for inspiration. I mean, here we've got like a little gift one right here. So just so many good ideas for this. I've also, in addition to this being, and the reason I just called it a tote is so many people just go, well, I don't drink wine or I'm not going to make this for wine. Like, you know, I don't need a wine tote, so to speak. This is going to be great for water bottles. This is going to be great for maybe you want to give a gift to someone and it's a candle, like, you know, a, any kind of like glass cylinder candle, right? You could totally put this in here. Um, it, you could gift like sourdough starter, sourdough starter kit. It, you know, some of my friends can and give away like canned items or canning items or, you know, so it's really, it can totally work as a gift bag for so many different other things. It can totally work as a water bottle cozy um, and holder. So many water bottles don't have a handle, so you're having to hold your bottle. And I just think that's madness. So you can crochet something like this and it can hold your water bottle for you. Again, so many great ideas. If you want to see what yarns people have used as they made all of these different samples, again, Ravelry is a great place for you to see that because as people post their projects to Ravelry, they're adding in and linking in details like this. So we can see that, for example, Linda, I'm sure Linda Woodthorpe used Aunt Lydia's Classic 10 thread. So we can, I think this is, I think it's a safe bet to say that this is Linda's project. But you can also see other cotton yarns in the Wait For category, like So Crafty Baby, Lily Sugar and Cream, The Women's Institute, uh, Red Heart Scrubby Smoothie, Premier Yarns, Bernat, Knit Picks Dishy. That's what I use. That's one of my favorite cottons. Peaches and Cream, Hobby Lobby, I love this cotton so many different cottons. So maybe you're looking for a yarn substitute or maybe you just saw a project here that you liked. This is a great resource for you to find all of those. All right, guys. So that's everything that I wanted to share with you today about the updated format of the basket weave crochet stitch tote. Again, you can not only, this is not only going to be a great resource for you to learn the basket weave stitch if you've never tried it before, but there's so many great resources to help you with resizing, to, you know, resizing a single crochet base, resizing this particular project, remaking it in something like a blanket or, you know, a basket like this. So many great resources. So take a peek. Be sure to share this on social in some way. You know, there, there are social links right here so you guys can save it, so you can view it later if you want. Um, do me a favor, maybe tag a crochet friend in the comments or share this video, share this link uh, to this pattern in at least one place that you enjoy crochet if you think they'll dig it too. I'll totally, totally, totally appreciate that. All right, uh, final shout outs to everybody who is here live. It looks like Vonda is here. Hello to you. Kim Holding, I think I already gave you a shout out, but you get to just for being here. Thanks so much. Adriana, I learned so much from you turning in from Davis, California. I'm so glad to hear that because I don't just want to give patterns that you guys can view for free. Every single pattern that I create and share with the American Crochet Association, I want to make sure that there are learning resources with it. I don't want anybody to, to just be you know, um, reliant or dependent. I don't want any of the patterns I create to be a crutch. And that's why usually I don't do step-by-step -step video tutorials for every single project. That's just not my jam. I would so much rather show you why I created something, how it's a skill builder, and how you can use the skills that are in these projects to not only make these projects, but to make any crochet projects that you want. Ah, oh, definitely, says Vonda. Thanks so much. Uh, Kim says your patterns are so versatile and inspirational. I'm so glad that you think so. Hope you enjoy. Uh, Dana, 
Dana says hi to Goose. Goose! Dana says hi. I'm sure he says hello back, even though he's not yelling right now. I'm sure he does. All right, guys. If you guys follow this pattern and make the basket weave basket, make the basket weave drink tote, make a basket weave crochet blanket, whatever you do with the basket weave stitch, I would absolutely love to see. So please keep posting your projects to Ravelry. I check those all the time and definitely share them in our group. You can find it right here on Facebook, group colon, American Crochet Association. It's for everyone who loves crochet, especially to share your crochet projects that you make from our website like this one. All right, everybody, enjoy. Peace, love, crochet. See you next time. Bye-bye.